These are the strongest items in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but they also take the longest to get. Some are only given right before finishing the story, while others require special loot that you can only get in a handful of places. So quick spoilers alert as we're gonna go over some super endgame stuff here and I'm also going to show you possibly one of the most slapped on skills that can literally one shot enemies. Let's get started with probably the most unexpected overpowered materia right now in the game which is the petrify slash petrify and poison because both of these give you access to the quake effect and quake is an amazing ability from all points of view first of all because it applies petrify build up and the moment the build up is complete on a target this is going to completely take it out of the fight it doesn't matter if it's 90 percent hp it's going to immediately take it out as if it just got one shot it you can make that build up go up even faster by using abilities that can pressure and even stagger enemies it also seems to build up naturally as you deal damage to them Plus, it seems that abilities like Soul Drain can definitely impact that even more. So that's why Aerith is an amazing combination with this. She can just cast a couple of Soul Drains after a Quake, and this is going to immediately fill that bar and take those enemies out of the fight completely. By the way, you can totally combine Poison and Petrify Materia with a Warding Materia, and this is then going to give you partial resistance to both of these effects if enemies use that against you. And at 3 stars Warding Materia, you can even completely avoid getting petrified yourself. And second of all, Quake is also amazing against any target that has a Guarding Stance, so whenever you can't attack them with normal melee attacks, using a Quake from below is just going to immediately stun and stagger them, and you can just go ham at it with the full on damage. Now besides this we also have the Cetron Bracer and the Cetron Armlet, by far the best armors in the entire game as they provide like 8 or so material links very easily and they also have some of the best defenses for all characters. However, you will have to be very far into the game, so quick spoilers alert, if you don't want to like check any of this, maybe come in back at a later date, but for everybody who's staying, this is something that you can get in chapter 13, actually quite late into chapter 13 as you go into the north side temple. So for the armlet, you're gonna need to progress quite a bit further into chapter 13, essentially on the second time you get to play with Aerith when she gets her livestream powers and gets to channel like the livestream right here in this massive stone. And eventually two paths open up that are both blocked by enemies, so we're gonna focus on the one to the left side as we're gonna want to head over to this specific room right here in the Hall of Life second tier, which is going to be the one holding the container with the armlet inside. So there's gonna be some enemies inside, but once you defeat them at the edge of this, you're going to notice this chest. And if you open it up, this is going to give you that armlet right away. Meanwhile, for the bracers, you need to head over a bit later into the chapter, pretty much towards the end of it, right here in the Hall of the Resurrection, first tier. So when you get back control with Cloud, you're going to reach this junction, and instead of going the path upwards, you're going to want to go into this larger room right here that acts as a dead end. So simply head over to this side, there's going to be an enemy that you have to defeat right here, and once you beat that enemy, there's a chest behind it, inside of which you will find the bracers. And congratulations, you just got some of the best armor in the entire game. But let's talk about some of the true endgame items you can find in there, which are the Genji armaments. So gloves, earrings, and ring, but specifically I want to cover gloves, since these are by far the best in the entire game so normally damage goes up to a maximum of 9999 this completely breaks that limit and now you can deal like 20 30 40 50k depending how well you build up your team i of course already covered how to unlock these items as well as the super boss that you have to fight in one of the previous videos so totally check that one out it's going to fully guide you step by step through the entire process of unlocking the gilgamesh fight as well as defeating all the enemies and then unlocking these awesome items. So how do you even get to build these accessories? Well, you need to reach at least level 16 in the craftsmanship, which by the way you do by crafting everything in the item transmuter, including the 5 XP items, and especially so where people kinda end up giving up is where you have to take up dark matter, as there's no guide out there where to get it. So I'm gonna show you exactly all the locations in which you can find dark matter, specifically because you will need them for the last five or six or so pieces in the accessory upgrades menu like the psychic charm karmic cowl draconic ring and so on 
So there are six locations. Four of them are going to be at the gold saucer and two of them are going to be out in the open world. So starting with the ones in the open world, the first one is going to be the Dust Bowl right here on the side of the map in Corel. You have to finish the Gold Rush minigame right here on the Expert difficulty, but rank 2 is going to be enough to give you those three Dark Matters. The second one is going to be in the Under Junon region, basically right here in the village area at the Dolphin Show minigame. Again, completing this on Expert mode and rank 2 will be enough to give you the other three Dark Matter right there. And then the remaining ones are going to be in the Chocobo Speed and the Wonderman Squares, respectively, at the Gold Saucer. But again, this is only going to be after the start of Chapter 13. So in the Chocobo Square, you have to complete the Kujata Stampede Race in the Grade 2 Chocobo Races. Then in the Speed Square, you have to complete Galactic Survivor on Expert Mode and get at least a Rank 2. And finally, in Wonderman Square, you have to complete both G-Bike as well as defeat Shiva in the 3D Brawler. So G-Bike again on Expert Mode and get Rank 2 and Shiva should not be that difficult if you learn her patterns. Plus, of course, all of the GP vendor items that cost 700 gold saucer points like Resplendent Rob, Gilded Tentacle and Oriate Horn, you will pretty much find one of these in each of the squares at all of the GP vendors over there, but you will need them to craft these items. So once you hit 16, it's time to craft the Genji gear and you will need also 6 classified Intel enemy parts that you only get via the hard difficulty. So you will first need to actually set the game on the hard difficulty and take upon those bosses. You do so by the way via the chapter select, but you will have to first finish the game before having this unlocked. I recommend of course putting all of this in chapter 13 since this is going to pretty much unlock access to everything that you will need. And from this point on, just go ahead and do all of those classified intel fights, starting with the winged dragon right here in the grassland, then move over to the Mind Flayer right here in the Junon region. You're gonna then move over to the Sultan of Stench that you can find in Gongaga. Fourth one is going to be the Wyvern Encounter in this cave down south in Cosmo Canyon. Meanwhile, fifth is going to be the Thornberry King, which we'll find in Corel. By the way, his pristine crown is also part of a side quest for Johnny. And finally, the Avian Tyrant right here in Nibble, which is by the way also the easiest of all of the fights. So now that you're done with this, the only thing that you need left is the Pirate Jet Sum. And there are a few easy ways to get this, but by far the best is to also use the Corsair's Compass, which is by the way going to constantly indicate where they are relative to you while navigating the Meridian Ocean. So to actually get to craft the Corsair's Compass, you will first need to find 4 treasure chests after chapter 12. So around chapter 12, when you return to Costa del Sol, you will see one of these Pirate King treasure chests right here on the docks. And if you interact with it, this is going to then open up that sort of side mini event that you can complete. And from this point on, you will need to go to four specific treasure chest locations around the Meridian Ocean to basically fight a bunch of enemies and then steal the loot to finally be able to craft that Corsair's Compass. So the first one is going to be located right here, pretty much east of Gongaga. Then we have to a little bit northeast from the Corral region. And then there's also going to be the fourth and final one right here a bit south of Junon. Again, you'll have to actually travel with a tiny Bronco to each of these locations and manually get them. Once done, you can go ahead, immediately craft the Corsair's Compass. And whenever you navigate the Meridian Ocean, even if you don't have that equipped on any character, it's always going to point you towards the next Pirate Jetsam container. A semi-clean sweep of the ocean will be enough, you don't even have to discover the entirety of it, it should be enough the way I did it to discover pretty much all of the pirate jetsam in every location, and once you're done with that you can go ahead and craft the final three pieces for the Genji gear. And congratulations, now you should be all set with some of the best gear in the entire game, pretty much ready for the brutal challenges and especially so the legendary bouts coming later on. Or if you want to replay the game full on brutal difficulty or hard difficulty, you can totally go ahead and do so with this. That's why one of my favorite team comps right now is using Cloud, Tifa and Aerith as this provides some of the highest stagger in the game. One because we get Arcane Ward which doubles all our casts and then we have the ultra high damage multiplier from Tifa's triangle attacks. So the way I'm doing it is that I immediately make sure to stagger the boss and immediately cast a stop with the haste materia on it as that's going to lock that stagger bar in place. 
and while that happens, I place down an arcane ward on Cloud and start charging a double ATB charge cast like a Blizzaga or Firaga, depending on the enemy's weakness. Meanwhile, while this is happening, I make sure that my Tifa, which is buffed with two at least unbridled strengths, gets some triangle attacks going in, increasing that stack damage multiplier to at least 240%, 275 and 300 of course being preferred. And once all of this lines up, you can see some of these insane damage multipliers and that's only for one of the double cast hits because if these bosses survived, we could have done like 50, 60, 70k damage with ease. There's even the option with Infinity's End, for example, if an enemy doesn't have any elemental resistances, this one also takes advantage of the staggered phase and you can further deal very high damage if you also have those Genji gloves on. This is pretty much it, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.